Hello and welcome to another video. I've actually managed to tick off one of my wanted to do items with building my own Super Het receiver. The oddball thing with it is I'm using the Russian rod pentodes, one uh, J18Bs. So there's three of them in here. It's um, not a powerful receiver, sorry, not a sensitive receiver I should say. It's basic. <laughs> it's got to be basic if I'm building it. I took a lot of inspiration from a Japanese website. I shall put it in the text of the uh, page, but this is the actual page. And it was done by Mr. T. Kawabata. Hopefully I've got that right. His name is there at the top. This was the uh, one of the circuits he has on his uh, on his uh, internet site, which was a two tube reflex superhet using Rus Russian sub miniature tubes, rod tubes. Now he went a different way. He's got one J twenty four B and a one J twenty nine B. The twenty nine B can give you quite a bit more oomph for the speaker. I do have some of them valves. But as a starter to this, the 1J18Bs are quite simple in that the third grid and the screen are all tied to the filament negative pin. So in other words, they're all going to ground as it stands. So it means to say there's less wires coming out of the valves. It's easy to actually lay out, especially when you're using this sort of technique, which is basically single-sided vero board, or copper clad board, not vero board. I cut little rectangles of double-sided PCB and then solder them to the board where I need tracks or pads to actually uh, join things. Um, what it is, it starts off is the first one, oops that's my meter, I'm about to time out. The first valve is connected, I'll tell you what, I'll use this part of the circuit because it's very similar. Flight rod, antenna tuning, um, feedback coil into the valve, a local oscillator from its own anode and an IF can actually off the anode as well. So that valve is doing three things in effect. It's one being an RF amplifier, because it amplifies the signal going through. It mixes it and gives an IF out. And it also provides the oscillator, which is not bad for a pentode. It's not the sort of normal valve you'd actually use, but it shows that a valve can do many things. Now in his circuit here, um, he's used another valve to do another lot of IF application detection and then feed that back to the grid of a 1J29B to give then driving an output transformer. As I say because I wanted to keep it fairly simple and there's less wires on these things where this screen and the G3 are connected internally to the negative side of the filament I've used the 18Bs so hence I've actually got 18B doing all the aforementioned oscillator, first IF output, RF input. I've got a second valve just doing IF amplification, which then goes to a diode detector, bit of filter network. It also provides an AVC voltage or AGC voltage coming back that goes to the first grid of the IF amplifier. So it doesn't feed back to the front end, it only feeds back to one stage. And then I've got the audio output driving an output transformer and speaker. I've not even put a volume control in it at the moment because it's not that loud. So whatever I get from the detected audio drives the grid of that valve and goes to the speaker. It's not bad, it's not brilliant, um, but it proves a point. 
it took a lot of time and effort to, to wind the coils um, to get them as I wanted to to actually resonate at 470 kcs for them to and a lot of working out with some spreadsheets to get tracking of the local oscillator and the tuning condenser across the ferrite rod so that's the actual tune section and that's my pickup that feeds into the grid of this I'll power it up don't expect miracles let's see if we can find the station oh no put power on might help probably talk sport the current it's taking is 4.4 milliamps out of um, six nine volt batteries so I've got about 54 volts on the anode the second grids are all straight up to um, HT as well but that's that one adverts that's all radio seems to be nowadays not a lot of music which is probably good for the Google um, copyright stuff so it does receive it could certainly do with an external antenna and pick up coil on the ferrite rod and feed that through local station not a lot else I know there's not a lot of medium wave nowadays it's getting a bit uh, I think most of it is because it's not that sensitive But there's about four stations it's picking up it's been a fun project um, time consuming but very very satisfying and if anybody else is out there uh, likes building things it's something to suggest um, the voltage is 54 volts it's not really going to hurt. I've been across the HT a few times with my fingers without thinking about it. You can feel a bit of a tingle. Dry skin. Um, a few milliamps current. It's using a 1.2 amp nickel metal high drive battery. For these valves it takes about 75 milliamps for all three of them. And that's a 2.6 amp hour nickel metal high drive. So that will power them for a while. Um, so if anybody wants to play with valves and building circuits, battery valves, the DL series, the rod pentodes, um, or even the DKDFs that you find in the normal battery portables, will work down to about 50, 60 volts quite easily. So if I can do it, I'm sure other people can do it as well. The good thing is you don't need to actually have a power switch for the HT if there's batteries removed from that then the way I've done it is there is no potential dividers across the HT it draws no current at all and also like to thank all the new subscribers or current subscribers and new subscribers I don't know what's happened on YouTube for it to uh, get put out there the cut the channel but it's much appreciated and uh, thanks to you that have subscribed and thanks for watching bye now